What's up, YouTube? I'm testing here this new um, format for the microphone and the microphone placement. Let me know if you like it. Um, before we this prediction check starts, let's look at this chart of the um, championship span. Bottas and Raikkonen, we can, we can ignore them for now. Let's look at Vettel with 75 points in span, 50 points behind Hamilton in the championship. This is an important detail here to know. Vettel and Hamilton have ended the last few races first and third, with Vettel losing 35 points in span each time. If this trend continues, he will end the Japanese Grand Prix in semi-serious risk with 40 points span, and the US Grand Prix with 5 points span, and be world champion by Mexico with 30 points to spare for Hamilton. Um, so, this is the, um, the prediction. If true that Vettel exits the US Grand Prix with 5 points in span, that will cause him to be in a situation in which he has to win every single race Mexico, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi, and hope that Hamilton doesn't score another point. That is, if trends continue until the US Grand Prix. He still has 75 points in span. It's extremely hard to keep the losing rate less than 25. So, by my calculations, he should, uh, he should lose the World Championship and Hamilton should be crowned world champion in Mexico, if not in the US. That done, this is um, qualifying battles. I'm recording this a few hours before the Japanese Grand Prix qualifying before, before FP3. And this are um, the details. I decided to give Van Dorn the... Um, the upper hand for, for Russia because he started ahead of Alonso for, for great penalties and let's be honest, the waffle deserves a break. Now to the really juicy stuff, the um, predictions. Kimi of course will not retire, we expected him to retire when Leclerc was announced for Ferrari, but Kimi instead decided to restart career mode. And um, four teams winning races, that is almost impossible to happen. It's pretty much guaranteed that it will not happen. So far, Mercedes, um, well, the top three teams have the, all the um, races at 8-3-5. Um, Honda, good but unreliable, we have that point since Bahrain, we've had it for a long time, you may remember in Bahrain, Pierre Gasly was P4, yada yada, China, the two Toro Rosas crashing into each other, and also the fact that the Honda power unit has burned through its, compo through its components a lot faster than everyone else. This is the count as far as the Russian Grand Prix. 15 cars getting under the penalties. We've had that since um, Singapore, the race before Singapore, which is Italy. We've had that since then, and even though people were um, penalized in Russia, no one knew, so no new counts. McLaren, um, oh, big crash causing a hill of controversy. Um, well, you may remember that from Belgium. Um, super hard used only once. Hard was used only once in Silverstone. And it's already time that every single tie compound for every race has been announced. And we're only going to be seeing the mediums 
from now on. Look at the media overcompensating on Dread Girls. Yes, but it was more in Singapore, and it was someone other than um, than Look at the media. It was Singapore Airlines brand ambassadors. Are you serious? Bottas finishing P4 or lower in the ah oh sorry 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 not yet um Liberty Media is passing up the pre-race show we of course have that covered uh because of the yeah, intro 2021 rules we still don't know whether they're going to include the MG rage Bottas this is this is very important as far as the Singapore Grand Prix Bottas was still P4 in the championship, but but catching Raikkonen really fast, he finally overtook him when he exited the um, Russian Grand Prix, even though team orders were issued. Now in P3, and, seem and seemingly no way to get back until something drastic changes. Red Bull definitely will not sign Fernando Alonso since he will be retiring at the end of the season. They, um, of course, Alonso is now a Le Mans winner. And of course, Red Bull Honda will be a thing. The Inside Line recently made a video about that. Um. One new race winner. I am counting Max Verstappen in Austria because it's his first time winning without a Kvyat boost. And yes, the torpedo is back for Toro Rosso next season. The silly season can't get any sillier, can it? Vettel are scoring Kimi 2 to 1. It's pretty much fixed. So far at 1.37, it's been that way for a long time, for a, quite a few races, in fact. Um, somebody getting a penalty ban? No, but Grosjean was disqualified from the Italian Grand Prix, which is kind of halfway to a penalty ban. Red Bull finishing second is pretty much not going to happen. They are going to be P3 in Constructors. Uh, Williams, P7 or worse, it's pretty much guaranteed that they're going to be P11 in Constructors if we count Sahara Force India. Uh, rubbish red flag, we have that since Monaco where the race, where one free practice session had to be red flagged because of a loose manhole cover. We have a total of mm, 11 and a half out of 25 on the chamber board. That's quite um, margin. On my chamber, on my prediction board, um, Geography Now, on their recent episode about Mexico, had no mention about Formula One, so no extra point on that. And we are adding an extra point for safety car or virtual safety car in Mexico. No one has come out of the closet and Fernando Alonso's resting pick reference didn't didn't really come from Fernando himself, but it did come from the Formula One YouTube channel. Uh, the topless photos, um, here they are, and I'm going to release a compilation of them at the end of the season. Russia joke, N nothing really surprising during the Russian Grand Prix, but you may remember that we counted a Russia joke by Force India in Canada. Kimi angry on Team Radio, we have that since um, Hungary.
crashes in Monaco and Singapore, we have that point since, well, Singapore. In Monaco, you may remember Leclerc and Hartley. And then the Force Indias crash into each other, which was entirely Checo's fault, which caused team orders to be issued. A race with no DNFs hasn't happened so far and probably will not happen, but we have that half point because of China. Grosjean, of course, was disqualified, which is a point there. And you may remember that Hamilton is already seeing a bit of karma in Austria because of the Princess Dressgate scandal. I'm so sad right now. Look at my nephew. Why are you wearing a princess dress? <laughs> this is what you got for Christmas. <laughs> Why did you ask for a princess dress for Christmas? Boys don't wear princess! <laughs> Sorry for the lag there that was set on automatic um, slide. Uh, Non-native speaker of Spanish giving an interview in Spanish. We have that in Spain because of Felipe Massa. Ten races with the first lap drama. Well, I did kind of count the Russian Grand Prix because of the Taylor Russells, but that happened in lap six. So uh, twelve, we still have the point. Um, yeah, the problem with the brakes with the two Toro Rosso guys. Uh, back of the grid twice, that has happened already several times, and in fact, both, um, both Toro Rosas have been sent to the back of the grid twice, Hartley has been sent five times, um, Ricciardo and Bersapen had has three and two, Hülkenberg twice, Sainz once, Alonso once, and Bottas once. Verstappen has been driving a day twice in a row in Singapore and Russia. The one he deserved the most was, of course, Russia. This one is from Instagram, from um, from one of Max's fan accounts. Driver a day, no higher than one third. We have um, this. Tally so far with Hamilton, uh, Hamilton, Vettel, and both Red Bulls having three each. Um, Gasly, Raikkonen, Leclerc, and Alonso having one, and I'm counting Perez for Azerbaijan because he deserved it, in my opinion, far more than Charles Leclerc. Ocon on the podium, you may remember qualifying in Belgium, which, let's be honest, Given the superiority of the top three teams, it's as far as we are going to get. No injuries or deaths. We have that point cancelled since Bahrain because of the whole Francesco Sigorini situation. Oh my goodness, I had never noticed um, some stains. Hopefully that's oil and not blood. Um, Andres Manuel losing the general election. That point is cancelled since Austria. And it's not looking very good for the country. And probably not good for the continuation of the Mexican Grand Prix past 2019. And some people are saying that the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix could be cancelled as well, leaving the 2019 season only 20 races long. But that is probably mostly conspiracy theories. Verstappen doing something stupid. We have that point since China, but this is uh, his situation in Monaco. Uh, we've gotten used to the halo, of course. And... Yeah, this is Leclerc's calm. Pit stop problems, 10 races. We have that we've had that for uh, some time. I'm counting for the Russian Grand Prix. Even though in Formula 1 nothing went wrong, but in Formula 2 something went wrong for a guy that will will by the way be an F1 driver next season, Lando Norris. 
when apparently he uploaded into his Instagram that a uh, problem in a pit stop caused a broken rim causing him to retire from the race in Russia. Force India did smash into each other, thank you Checo for that. Which did kinda ruin Esteban's and my birthday to an extent, but if you follow me on Instagram you know that my birthday was amazing nonetheless, but I still got the point there. That gives me a total of 18 points out of 25, which for a total of 29 and a half out of 50, well past the halfway mark and probably nearing the, the final score at the end of the season. And now we go to the championship span. This is a formula to calculate it at any point in the season. As far as the Russian Grand Prix, as we saw a second ago uh, at the beginning of the video, we have um, Raikkonen and Bottas about to be taken out. Well, this is this is as far as the Singapore Grand Prix. You may remember that Verstappen had 17 points in span entering into the Russian Grand Prix, which of course wouldn't last long, which does mean that he was taken out of contention on his birthday. This is the situation as far as the Russian Grand Prix, with Bottas and Raikkonen having 8 and 5. Of course, Bottas is pretty much out of contention into the Japanese Grand Prix, as well as Raikkonen. This is the um, situation with the Constructors' Championship as far as the Singapore Grand Prix is concerned. With Red Bull with 80 points in span, reduced to just 12. So it's pretty much guaranteed that in that in Japan they will be taken out of contention mathematically. And let's be honest, we knew that. You can follow me on Instagram, and yeah, I hope I can upload this before FP3 starts in the Japanese Grand Prix. So. Thank you very much for watching, I wish um, Ocon, Esteban Ocon the best, especially because he is still without a seat for next season. Let's hope for the best, and I hope that Hamilton can take until Mexico to seal his championship, so that I can see a world champion being crowned in my home track. So, um, I'll see you next time, and good luck to everyone.